Good morning students. Today in this module, we will continue with the topic weathering and in this we will learn about physical weathering. Let's begin. So if we define physical weathering, so mechanical or physical weathering involves breaking down of rocks and soil through direct contact. Now students here, the agents, different agents of erosion and weathering, when they mechanically break the rock into smaller fragments or smaller pieces, then this is known as physical weathering. Physical weathering happens due to various agents. It has some specific agents like temperature changes, freeze thaw action, wind, waves and rain. So students the first and the second one we will learn in little detail. Let us learn the third one first that is waves, rain, wind these are also the agents. They are agents of erosion as well as weathering. So they when they mechanically hit the rock and the rock break then we say it is physical weathering. Let's read it out. Wind, rain and waves can also cause weathering. The wind can blow tiny grains of sand against a rock. This process can wear the rock away. Rain and waves can also wear away rock over long period of time through erosion. So like this, little by little or bit by bit, waves, rain and wind, they also can lead to breaking down of a rock physically. Now students will learn about the agents of physical weathering. We can say the major agents. The first one is temperature change. So the best example can be seen in desert areas. In deserts, the days are very hot and the nights are cold. So we can say the day and night temperature has a vast range. We say this is diurnal range of temperature. So the diurnal or daily range of temperature is vast in the desert. So what happens? The rocks are usually poor conductor of heat. So the heat doesn't penetrate inside, rather only the upper layer of the rock get heated. So the rock expand during day and at night when the temperature drops, the rock contract. So like this alternate expansion and contraction leads to the development of cracks in the rock. The cracks gradually widen and the rock finally breaks. So this is how mechanical weathering or physical weathering happens. A rock breaks mechanically due to change in temperature conditions. The next very important agent is frost. So the frost action, what is it is, let's learn about it. Then we will understand that how it leads to breaking of a rock. So in very cold areas like polar or subpolar areas, the water in the cracks of the rock they freeze at night and children we know that ice has more volume than water. If you fill a bottle of water to its brim and put it in the deep freezer and when the water has frozen and you take it, uh, take the bottle out, you will see the bottle has swollen or the, there is a lot of pressure on the bottle as if it will burst. The reason is that ice take, occupy more space compared to the water. So the water that is in the first diagram has frozen at night into ice and you can see it is occupying more space and the arrows are showing you that it is exerting a lot of pressure on the rock, on the crack of that rock. So like this the crack will become whiter. So it will happen every day. In the daytime the rock will contract because the water will melt, sorry the ice will melt and at night the water will freeze and it will exert more pressure. So during the day the pressure will be released, at night the pressure will be built up and exerted. So like this alternate freeze and thaw, thaw means to melt. So alternate freeze and thaw will lead to the breaking of rock into smaller pieces. So students this is how frost action leads to mechanical or physical weathering. Now we will learn about the different types of physical weathering and the first one in the list is exfoliation or onion peeling. Let's learn about it and the name must have sounded very interesting. 
So here is a diagram and the points written. This will explain very well what actually this is. So exfoliation or onion peeling. See the uh, first one. Here you can see the arrows. The rock surface expand during the hot day. So it usually happens in desert where as I told you students uh, rocks are poor conductor of heat. So they absorb heat and only the upper layer gets heated. The heat doesn't penetrate inside because the rocks are poor conductor of heat. So the upper layer gets heated during the day and at night the upper layer loses heat quickly and contract. So this alternate expansion and contraction of the outer layer or the upper layer of the rock the, this becomes weak. The outer layer becomes weak and get separated from the rest of the rock. You can see students the outer layer it, the, it has uh, turned into fragments and it has you can see it all around. So the upper layer has been detached from the main rock. Now the next layer is exposed. The same process will happen to the next layer. The next layer will now experience alternate heating and cooling and it will get detached from the rest of the rock. So students like this, layer by layer this rock will break. So here the weathering is happening layer by layer. So you can understand what I mean. If you see an onion, you can when you peel it, it comes out layer by layer. Similarly, in this type of weathering, the rock is breaking layer by layer. So this is known as exfoliation or onion peeling. The next one in the list is granular disintegration. Students, the name itself says granular has a word hidden called grain. So in this type of physical weathering where the rock breaks grain by grain and why this happens because there are rocks uh, made up of different grains of different nature and we can say heterogeneous nature. Maybe this rock has grain of sand, grains of silt, clay, loam, so different varieties of grains in a uh, single rock uh, which has a heterogeneous structure. So what happens, each grain has a different rate of heating and cooling. For example, sand gets heated very quickly and also loses heat very quickly. But the other grains might not get heated very quickly as the sand does and might not get very quickly cooled down also like the sand does. So what I mean here that different rock has a, uh, sorry, the different grains in that particular rock has different rate of heating and cooling. We say differential rate of expansion and contraction. You can see in the picture every grain has a different or differential rate of expansion and contraction. Some grains uh, expand more and they contract more and others might expand less and contract also less comparatively. So what happens? Different grains in that rock they start behaving differently. So because of their such a lot of difference in their nature they start breaking down grain by grain and this is known as granular disintegration. So students here because of the heterogeneous nature and heterogeneous structure of the rock the uh, ex uh, differential rate of expansion and contraction the rock broke physically or mechanically. So this type of physical weathering is known as granular disintegration. The next in the list is block disintegration. So here is a diagram and you can see big blocks of rock when they are exposed to alternate expansion and contraction means heating and during the day and cooling at night. So if this happens in homogeneous rocks then cracks develop, cracks appear first then they develop and they widen and finally the rock break into several pieces. You can see in this picture how in a large area the big blocks have disintegration, uh, disintegrated into smaller pieces. So this is the concept of block disintegration. So students we have learnt about three types of physical weathering, onion peeling or exfoliation where the rock breaks layer by layer. The next one was granular disintegration 
where the rock break grain by grain due to differential rate of expansion and contraction and the third one is block disintegration where a big block break down due to alternate heating and cooling or alternate expansion and contraction. These are the references. Thank you students. That's all for today.